Hi again folks. We're going to do some cooking today. Haven't done that in a while. Actually, we just uh, mysteriously got this uh, package in from Home Chef. Uh, apparently they're fine with us uh, doing this as long as we let people know that it came from them. So the one we're looking at is actually this. It's uh, salmon, spicy mustard salmon with some brown sugar Brussels sprouts. Okay, I don't know. Uh, Tyler picked it. It was a choice between that or one of these other three. We also had um, sherry glazed roasted chicken, which looks pretty good, with uh, Asiago stuffed tomatoes. And that appears to be zucchini squash over there. Uh, da, da, da. And Tex-Mex style pork or pork stuffed peppers. And we were considering doing this one and everything, but I know the boys and the whole peppers thing, they're not going to finish it. And then, of course, there's the crispy onion crusted chicken, which actually looks really good to me. This is the one I was hoping they would pick, but they went with the salmon, so... Let's give it a go. Now, since I now know how to fast forward in a video, I can actually prep all the, uh, the components and everything here. While we're doing the video. As a matter of fact, I can do everything while we're doing the video. Seriously, the knife and cutting board appeared there. Okay, let's see what we got here. Minimum internal protein temperature, 165 degrees for a chicken and turkey. Okay. Got for ingredients here. Okay. Most important is the salmon. I got a big old bag of actually slightly oversized Brussels sprouts. Some chives looks like. Oh, it's not labels. Interesting. style mustard and almond slivers shallot hmm garlic salt a little Frank's red hot hot sauce not enough to really make anything super spicy but I guess it might get your attention there and everything bagel, I don't know, seeds looks like. And brown sugar topping. Okay. Now, the great thing about these is you get to use the bag for the garbage at the end. Okay, so, we're gonna have to rinse that because we're peeling it. We will have to rinse these, I suppose. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay. I'm going to rinse the Brussels sprouts just in case. Because they're packaged, we probably don't have to, but just to be on the safe side, we will. And they actually tell you to any kind of fresh produce, go ahead and do it up. Okay, yeah, sorry. Spraying it off in the sink over here.
undoubtedly will end up slicing those. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, preparation, or preparing the instruction, sorry, the ingredients, yeah, preparing the ingredients. Preparing the instructions makes no sense at all. Okay, preparing the ingredients. Trim stems off Brussels sprouts and have vertically a quarter if larger than a ping pong ball. Some of these are about the size of a ping pong ball, but uh, I'm gonna go with a slightly larger. <coughs> all right, get ourselves a glass bowl that'll hold all of these. So, cut the end, and because I'm making this for the boys, I'll go ahead and quarter them instead of have them. I mentioned at the end of the last story that we did there was uh, we're needing people to start sharing. It used to be when we put these videos out, the sharing numbers were uh, around 100 or so. That was back when we had maybe uh, a few hundred subscribers, you know, maybe 200 subscribers, something like that. Now that we're almost to a thousand subscribers, we're getting, oh, maybe 10 or 11 shares. So the more people we get, the less it's being shared and the slower things are going. And basically, for this channel, it won't work. Pretty much, if people aren't, if the, if the channel isn't growing, it's dying. And if you guys want to keep doing the, uh, the free money giveaways, you gotta help us make it grow. If you don't, then you can say goodbye to it soon enough. I thought we were thinking of uh, actually looking very seriously at opening a channel. Not a channel, that's not the right word, a website that'll help with a lot of problems. shall see. Really hope this works out because Ruby, eh, she seems to like the fact that she gets to stay busy. Gives her, I guess you'd say a sense of purpose? Well, you know, aside from the other senses of purpose she already has. <laughs> As for me, well, I gotta say, life would actually be a lot easier if I didn't have to do videos regularly. Alright, alright. That's okay. Once things kick off, we got some interesting ideas for uh, games and such. One of the ones that I'm looking forward to. Well, we can't do it until we have a pretty good amount of followers, but I think you guys will enjoy it. It requires a lot of audience participation, but at the same time, it should be a lot of fun, too. Yeah, it's a small one, and we have one tiny one at the end. I'm not even going to bother cutting that one. It's already too small anyway. Okay, so that 
is our first ingredient prepped. One of the interesting things about um, the home kitchen is they're mostly not prepped, but they're, the portions are already re ready for you. So your portions are prepped, but you have to do a little bit of work. Okay. That was our Brussels sprouts. Now, we mix our chives. And if you don't have chives, it's no big deal. Basically, green onions or scallions. Try to find the smallest ones you can and go with it. This is the part where I keep waiting for me to cut my own finger off here. <laughs> I am not what you would call skilled with a kitchen knife at all. Say Ruby and, well, several of her family. They're amazingly good at them. It's like watching a food processor go to work on them. But me, no, not so much. Okay. Okay. Uh, something that may save you a little bit of trouble is when you have a little bowl and you're taking stuff off the cutting board, set the bowl on the edge of the cutting board, find a clean spot, put it on there. That way, if anything spills off, well, it just falls back on the cutting board. Of course, then again, balls on the counter, it's not really that big a deal either. It's just kind of the the idea of it. <sighs> okay, next up, peel and have shallot. Slice thinly. Okay, no problem. We will peel it first. Now, I guess that's the one thing I've noticed that's a bit different about shallots. And, again, I'm not a chef, I'm a cook. And I never really dealt with shallots before. I always just grabbed an onion and went with that because everything I read said that one was an effective substitute for the other. But, since doing these home kitchen, or home chef uh, recipes, I've had to deal with shallots quite a few times, and the biggest difference I've noticed between shallots and onions isn't the flavor, the texture, or anything like that. Maybe the size maybe a little bit, but it's just like a small onion. But the one thing is, I'll take this over here. With an on onion, if you got bad spots, you have to peel the entire outer layer. With a shallot, it's just that outer skin. Once you get rid of that outer skin, it's ready to go. and onion skin, so paper thin, basically. So you save a little bit of the shallots. It is a good flavor though, I mean, it's a mild flavor, uh, nowhere near as harsh as an onion is typically. So, eh. All right, let's have this thing and start thin slicing it. Ooh, I cannot thin slice like my wife, but Eh, I can thin slice enough, I guess. Yeah. So my thin slice is about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Ruby thin slices, eh, you guys probably do something similar. It looks like a machine slice them and they're super thin, like half a millimeter. Alright. Okay. Another. Well, we don't really have ramekins yet. I gotta order some someday. Because ramekins are not necessary. They're not necessary at all, but they're just nice to have. It really is. It's totally a luxury, but it makes you feel better. I don't know why, but it's like a, a 
psychological sort of thing. And there are times when they are handy, very handy. Okay, that's our shallots. Pat Salmon Dry. Season flesh side with a quarter teaspoon of salt and a pinch of pepper. Okay. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get our paper towel ready then. And I don't see anything else that needs to be. Step over here and grab something. <laughs> now, something you folks don't realize is just how well behaved the boys are being right now. It's amazing. They're right behind me. They've been there the whole time. Of course, then again, they're playing a video game with the volume turned off. So, <laughs> there you have it. But anyway, let's uh, let's jump over here and do this. All right. Hey guys, give me a number. Five, six, seven, three. Give me a, an original number, not the same number as you give me again. Come on. One six five two. One six five two. Okay. One six five two. One six five two. That's our first clue for today. It was given to us by Tyler. The next one, we'll let Zabby do it totally spontaneously, right? 2079. No, we won't go with that one because it's too early for it. <laughs> but we'll get back to Zabby in just a bit. <sighs> okay. Ew. Wow, they put a board in it this time. Usually they don't do that. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Fortunately, We do have garbage day and, well, I can take off in about a day and a half, so, no worries on that. Hey, I'm just glad they haven't given us one with scales on it. I may have already told you guys the story, but uh, I tried to imitate one of the, uh, the recipes that I got from here for some friends, and... It was absolutely delicious, but it took me forever because I didn't realize the salmon we had had the scales on. And I didn't really realize how much trouble it was going to be to clean that. It's not that much trouble once you figure out how to do it, but initially, I was like, oh, come on. It easily added an extra 15 minutes to the whole process. Okay, salmons are padded off. <sighs> okay, place everything bagel seasoning on a plate. Place salmon on the seasoning, flesh side down, press gently to adhere. So we're trying to bang it in there, okay. <laughs> That whole press gently thing, totally overrated. Everything bagel seasoning. Now, I'll tell you what, you can't really see it in the package here. I'll put this on the plate and bring it over so you can see it. And, you know, it may actually say on the back what this is. Nope, doesn't say what it actually is. But we got some poppy seeds, sesame seeds. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah, plenty of little poppy seeds and sesame seeds. Looks like garlic, maybe? Yeah, it looks like some dried garlic in there. Mm, I'm smelling what must be, I don't know, maybe pepper. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. We're going to 
press the uh, the fish into this, or this into the fish, one or the other. Uh. Okay, so we flip them upside down. Wait, 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 wait. Spread it out just a bit there. I am going to try to mop it up with this. Hate to let little tiny seeds go to waste. <sighs> okay. We'll just leave that for a few minutes. Apparently the next thing up is cooking vegetables. Ah, okay. So, as far as cooking the vegetables... <laughs> Let me wash my hands real quick. non-stick skillet over medium heat, add one teaspoon of olive oil, hmm, okay, Get a little bit of a light going on there, let's say medium high heat, oh, just medium heat, okay. for a few minutes. Hmm. So add Brussels sprouts, shallots, and garlic salt to hot pan. Stir occasionally until lightly browned and tender. Eight to ten minutes. Add brown sugar and two teaspoons of water and cook until sugar dissolves 30 to 60 seconds. While vegetables cook, continue recipe. I hate it when they do that because they don't really let you know if you're going to have enough time or not. They seem to think you will, so we'll go with it. But. Uh, And here are our Brussels sprouts, our shallots, and our garlic salt. Oh, oh. I leave the big bowl out because yeah, it can probably be used again. mess up. <laughs> That's the shallots. I put the chives in there. Oh well, say love you. Sorry, I'm just looking at the bottom and I see curly salt on unprotected pan down there. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> so we let that cook. We're going to eight to ten minutes. It's 9.08 by that clock, but that's only because the power went out the other day and I have not reset it yet. Uh, place a medium oven stay oven safe, non-stick pan. Oh, oh boy. Flames and bangs, all right. Um, place a medium oven safe, non-stick pan or medium high heat. Huh. Okay, I don't actually have an oven safe pan yet. So we're going to have to transfer. They're obviously, yeah, they obviously don't want us to do that, but yeah. Say I love you. Side down to hot pan. We're not quite hot yet, so we're gonna wait a moment or three here. Okay, I forgot to preheat the oven. I didn't even notice it was up there. Okay, um, it says to preheat oven to 400 degrees. Uh, I'm not positive what that is in uh, Celsius. Throw out a guesstimate, maybe 175, 200. I don't know. Not sure. Mm hmm. Fortunately, it'll take that long for, or take long enough to preheat that to get these done. Interestingly enough, these actually smell pretty good. Quite good, actually. Now, the, the, the fun thing is, because it's Brussels sprouts, I mean, they're tiny cabbages, basically, so you probably do this with cabbages, too. Some thin sliced onions, some cabbage, and celery salt, a little bit of olive oil, and yeah, this smells really quite good. There you go. We got the other tongue, 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 tongue. tongue. Okay, here we go. Oh, 
come on. Is that even making a sizzle? Okay. We're not going yet. If it doesn't even sizzle and hiss when you put it on there, it's not hot yet. Ah. starting to get soft. The tongue, they're telling me that. <laughs> I'm sorry, it sounded like something from a Chinese mafia thing or something. They're starting to get soft. The tongues are telling us that. Okay, let me double check here. Back to the veggies. Add brown sugar and two tablespoons of water and cook until sugar dissolves uh, 30 to 60 seconds. <sighs> okay, just to make this easier for myself, I'm going to clear a spot right in the middle there. I'm going to pour my sugar in there and the water on top of that. Now the Cook it in, mix it in. Okay. That's 30 to 60 seconds. Few more seconds there, and then I'll take it off. All right. Got a few seconds left. All right, Zabby. What's our next number, buddy? One two nine six seven. One two nine six seven. It was almost gonna be confusing for you guys. He said one two light. because we're supposed to transfer the whole pan to the oven. 
The thing is, like I said, we haven't gotten an oven safe pan yet. They all have the plastic handles, so that's a no-go. And, once again, I like to get a little bit of heat on every side. About a quarter inch, this is exactly what they're saying that you should do, but again, I just like it a little overdone. I like mine overcooked. Somewhere, somebody is screaming at me, don't do that, but I can't help myself. This is what I want. So we're not gonna leave it for terribly long, maybe one minute. And then we'll flip and flip. I'll throw it on the back to get the skin, just a little bit of a sear there. Actually, we're going to try for a good sear on the, uh, the skin. Hmm. And we better turn that fan on because it's getting smoky in here. The alarms will go off in a minute, and Ruby will come out going, what is that? Wait and see. I hope I'm wrong. Sensitive of uh, smoke, smoke detectors. Probably a good thing. Okay, I'm just going to turn that off and let it go. Should be going off any time now. You know, it's funny, you can't see it on there, but there is so much smoke in this place, it's not funny. <laughs> well, if the alarms think that it's moisture, they won't. That is easily the best Brussels sprouts I've ever eaten. And I just shook a nibble. Whoa. Okay, very, very, very good. Okay, guys, at this point, the oven is at 300 degrees. I started it way too late. I should have started it when we first began. My mistake. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and see what else we got going on here. Making the sauce. In a bowl, we'll combine mustard, chives, hot sauce to taste. Okay. Where's the almonds? That's what I hate about this. They never tell you about the almonds. 
Ah, top of vegetables and almonds. They, they, they always had one thing that I, I always missed. Okay, so we don't have to try it because I inadvertently put them in with the, uh, the Brussels sprouts and frankly, they're wonderful in there. Lovely. But if you do it right, <laughs> like someone standard or metric, eh, it should be in this mix. Okay. And as far as this mix goes, I'll just pour it directly in. Frank's hot sauce. For those of you who are not familiar with Frank's hot sauce, it was the original hot sauce for buffalo hot wings. I'm assuming, and I'm not positive on this, but I think it's actually true that the guy Frank who created the, the hot sauce in the first place was in Buffalo, New York. And that was his big practical application for it. I don't know. I could be completely wrong on that. Fact check it, put in a comment, put it in the comments, and maybe someday I'll get a chance to go to read them. Uh, until we get to be a big enough operation to hire people to point out the good stuff to us, we're not going to be able to see many comments. Okay, right, just stirring this up now. A little bit of mustard, a little bit of hot sauce, and, and it looks like everything cleared out and the alarms did not go off. So, I'm, I'm happy we were able to save you that annoyance. And Ruby too, she's she would have been very annoyed. <laughs> okay. I can see this working. Interesting, interesting. Okay, this root pub mustard. Root pub style mustard. You can actually smell beer in this. I'm sure there's no alcohol, but you can smell the smell of beer, and I don't know, maybe hops or something like that. Barley, malt, yeast, hops, yeah. Michelob, got a little bit of rice in there too. Michelob is brewed with rice. Three sixty-five on the oven temperature. I'm gonna steal another one of these. Really, really good. Okay. 370, I'm going to go ahead and pop these in. It says we should bake for 8 to 10 minutes. We got a new clock over there, so I got to peek around the corner. Okay, it's 14 minutes after by that clock. Her sauce. Okay. Oh, oops. Boys. Hey, do you guys want to try the uh, Brussels sprouts? They're already made. No, 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 not hot at all, actually. It's uh, warm, but it's not hot. These are the uh, tiny. Tiny cabbages. Okay, hold up here. Okay, I guess. Just pop it in your mouth. There you go, Zed. How's that for a veggie? Good. Zabby says, uh huh. Tyler says, mm. What do you think, Ty? Yes, no, maybe? Huh? You don't really like it that much? Okay. Tyler is not a vegetable guy. Zappy, on the other hand, he likes the veggies. <sighs> I do like strawberries. <laughs> That's a fruit. That's not a veggie. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, folks, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, 
getting things ready. Oh, well, that was actually for the fish. My napkin underneath the board. This is really super handy. Um, basically, I had to wipe down the uh, the counters and everything. When I was spraying the uh, the counters, I used this to wipe it off. Once it was wiped off, I had a perfectly intact napkin, but it was you know had the wipings from the the, the countertop. But I just laid it out flat and put the cutting board on top of it so that the cutting board wouldn't wouldn't slide. So, saves you a napkin, a little dual purpose action going on there, and it's completely away from the rest of the food because it's on the wrong side of the board. Unless you're cutting hard enough to go all the way through that board, then, eh, well, more power to you. Ugh. Okay, done, done, done. The measuring cup only had water in it, so no worries there. Okay. These go on top of the Brussels sprouts. So I'm going to drag out three plates real quick. Conveniently reviewed the food. Washed the dishes a while ago, and inconveniently, I'm already grabbing them and taking use of them. I feel guilty, but my stomach is empty, so. Okay. Our normal breakdown on this. Now, Zavi likes the veggies a bit more than the peaches, so we'll give him a good bit, but not too much, because he won't eat that many veggies. We cut them into quarters, actually, because they were a little on the big side. If they're smaller than a golf ball, just cut them in half. No big deal. Um, shallots or red onion, for that matter. Yeah, just go with that. Throw your thin sliced shallots, your um, Brussels sprouts, onto some hot oil in the, uh, the pan. A little bit of uh, celery salt. Stir it. Eight minutes or so, that's all you need. Stir it fairly constant. You're gonna look, get a little bit of a char in here too. You can actually see this. Yeah, okay, kind of hard to see. You can see the dark. That's where it very nearly burnt, but not quite. Anyway. And then after it does that, there were maybe two tablespoons of brown sugar and uh, two teaspoons of water. I cleared a spot in the very center, poured the sugar in, poured the water over it, and then just started stirring it all together. Really, really good. Uh, and again, I think you can get away with this. With cabbage, it would taste a little different, but I think it would still be really good because cabbage, Brussels sprouts, close enough. Okay, we were waiting for 10 minutes, and it would seem that about 7 minutes have already passed, so we're almost there. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it 
for a minute. Just because we'll need these tongs. All right. Two or three more minutes left. In the meantime, let's see. They usually give you a little cut spot. Oh, there we go. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Now, for our almond plates, we will try to distribute them. Okay. Not much time left. Okay. Plate dish as pictured in the front of the car, topping vegetables with almonds, garnish salmon with sauce. Remember the sauce was just a bit of hot sauce and some rhubarb style mustard. I have no idea where you would find the rhubarb style mustard. If you got Dijon mustard, go with that. If you can find it, well actually, you know what? The thing about this is the smell is similar to a beer, but it's not quite. It's the malt. It's definitely the malt. I can smell it now. Um, malt vinegar is kind of hard to come by, but balsamic vinegar is uh, as close a substitute as you need. So just a splash of balsamic and I think you would be just fine. So, go with a, a Dijon mustard. If you can't buy Dijon mustard, go with a plain yellow mustard. <clears throat> yellow mustard and maybe uh, just a little bit of mayo. Uh, like, if you're going to go with a tablespoon of yellow mustard, go with a teaspoon of may mayo. Mix them together. It's going to give you a, a nice creamy mustard and everything. And just a splash of balsamic vinegar. You'll, you'll be about right. Okay, our time is up. Let's pull out our club. And we attack the radioactive material. Okay. 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 I'll take the smaller of the two. And the other, I will break in half for Zabby and Tyler. It never breaks perfectly in half. So since Zabby has a little bit more vegetables, I'll do a little bit more, whichever of the two pieces is bigger, I'll give to Tyler. But Zabby also doesn't like fish nearly as much. So. Again, the one overpowering smell here is malt. Now, if you got some malt vinegar, you are set to go. Oh, 
Okay. We'll give you the final view. Mm, I really need a camera right above where we're at here. Oh well. Anyway, you can see the uh, de fish, de veggies, they're all good. Anyway, I'll tell you what, before we cut this off, we'll do two more real quick. Tyler Jude! Justin, hi. Okay, give us a number, buddy. Three digits. Four, four. That's two. Four, four, what? No. Four, oh, four. Four, oh, four. Okay. Four, oh, four. Four, oh, four. That is our third clue. Like a virus. Like a virus. Our four, oh, four screen when the internet can't take you to the right place. Four, oh, four. Such a depressing number. Okay. Ah. Okay, fellas. Come on over. Let's get your taste test. Come on. We need that taste test. Okay. This one is Zabby because it's got more veggies, and this one is Tyler because it's got a tiny bit more fish. Okay. Here you go, Ty. <laughs> oh, I turned that off too. Sorry about all the noise, it's just, it is what it is. Alright, I've already told you the veggies. Again, the Best Brussels sprouts I've ever had, right there. As far as the fish goes, let's see what we got. Hmm. Pretty good. The mustard sauce, not quite to my taste, but it is pretty good. I'll give it about a seven on the fish. The Brussels sprouts, on a scale of Brussels sprouts to Brussels sprouts, that's a 10 for me. But as far as veggies go, I'll go a 9, actually. It really is good. For the fish, I think 8 out of 10. Hmm. We got 8 out of 10 for the fish. Yeah, we're not rating that though, but we're just rating the taste of the fish and the taste of the veggies. The taste of the fish is a six and a half out of ten, which is saying a lot because Zaddy does not generally go for fish all that much. He will eat it, but it has to be pretty good for him to go for. Tyler, what was your rating on the vegetable? The Brussels sprouts. Okay, Tyler says he does not like the veggies. He's going with a four. Even after I, I added the almond slivers. Okay, Zabby, what was the... Uh... Rating for the fish. Sure. I figured the brown sugar on the veggies might change your mind, but I guess not. How about the seven. seven? Okay. Seven on the veggies for Zoe. In all fairness, when I was his age, I couldn't stand Brussels sprouts, so that's saying a lot. And our last last number. Five zero two two. Five zero two two. Five thousand and twenty-two. Okay, folks. That's all for us now. We'll see you next time.